In this video, we're going to have a little bit of creative fun with bricks and the footer as part of our website. Now, footers can be kind of boring, so how can we make it a little bit more interesting? How about we have a pretty nifty little reveal effect? Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is the site that we're testing out. It's a nice little blog site, and if we scroll down, you'll see the footer is revealed as we scroll up and down. It's a nice smooth effect, it'll drop shadow on there, kind of separates out, gives it a little bit of three-dimensionality. And this is actually a lot easier than you may think. It does require a little bit of CSS code, but all of that will be detailed down below so you can just use it as it is. And I will explain how it all works. So how do we go and do it? Let's just jump into the dashboard of WordPress and let me show you. So we need to apply this to the footer template for our website. There's a couple of caveats here that we need to be pretty much aware of, and I'll show you those in a moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down to my template for my footer, and we're going to open this up with bricks. And you can see inside here, I've got two different sections, a call to action and a footer. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that everything is affected. So to do that, we're going to make sure that we target the custom CSS to the call to action. Whatever's underneath it will just be pushed down as part of the design, as you've just seen anyway. So we'll select the CTA block. And what we're going to do is come over into the class assuming you create your classes. I'm going to come down to the CSS section. And what I'm going to do is you're going to pop in the bit of code that I'm going to give you. So we'll just paste that in. Now this is fully commented out, so I'll explain what's going on here in a moment. But you'll notice straight away that everything on the page bar the header section has disappeared. All it's done is the CSS is now in effect, and if we scroll up inside our preview, you'll see the effect takes place. So everything is working the way we need it to. I'm also going to just jump back over into the example, and we're going to open up the code view. Now, if you're enjoying this video and you'd like to see more content like this, go down there and hit that thumbs up button to tell YouTube that you like it. And while you're down there, why not hit the subscribe button as well? If you're not enjoying this content, though, you can hit that thumbs down button twice, as that works pretty well, too. Anyway, let's get back on with this tutorial. The reason I do this is because I want to show you a couple of things that are important if you are customizing various aspects of your design inside Bricks. So let's take a look at the CSS and see what's going on. The first thing, we're targeting the main tag. So you can see that's there. So if we come over into our code view and we select the main content inside our design, you'll see there's our main tag. It opens up main, then we've got an ID of BRX content, and then we close the main. So all of our main content is sitting inside there. So by targeting that with a CSS, what comes after it is going to target that specific portion of our design. So for this example, we need to make sure that the overall design, the content of our design, it takes up 100% of the viewport height. So this is why you can see inside our preview window, even though we've got no content, it's telling it this main area has to be full height, which means that then when we scroll, that's what creates the reveal effect of our actual footer section. So you can see our minimum height, 100 VH, viewport height. Then we've got our background color. Now we're setting our background color to make sure that we have a solid color here if you haven't set it on the different sections inside your design, which generally you wouldn't do. And I'm using a variable inside here, so I'm using the variable of light because I'm using core framework, but if you're using core framework or any other CSS framework, or you're creating your own variables for colors in Bricks itself, I would generally recommend you use a variable here as opposed to an arbitrary value, especially if you want to have a light and dark mode. It just means you have that flexibility that when you switch between those modes, all the colors will work correctly. Then you'll see we're specifying the main content, how it's visually stacked inside the Z index or Z index if you're American, specifying it as one, so it sits at the top. And you'll also notice that we've got the position of relative. So that is setting everything we need for our main content area. Then once we finish targeting that, we need to make sure that our footer section sticks to the bottom of our page, regardless of the size of the page. This is where the BRX footer ID is coming into play. Again, if we jump back into our code view and scroll down until we get to our footer section, we'll select it and you'll see we've got BRX footer. So by default, this is what Bricks is going to do. But if you specify a custom ID, you just need to make sure your CSS definition reflects that custom ID for the container for your footer. So if that is the case, just change what we have here, this BRX footer, to whatever applies to you. Then we're using the position of sticky. This is going to stick it to the bottom of our screen. Now, this is not supported by all older browsers, so do be aware of that. But 
pretty much all modern browsers will support this definition without any problems. Then we're specifying what position we want to stick it in. So currently it's set to be in the bottom with zero. In other words, there's no space underneath it. Anything else like that, it sticks to the bottom of the screen regardless. And then we're aligning it to the left edge of our viewport. So that's specifying that there. So this definition is effectively sticking it to the bottom, making sure there's no space there and positioning the content to the bottom left. That is setting everything up and you see we have the effect that we need. All you need to do then is if you want to kind of create a more three-dimensional effect is come into your templates or your content for your pages, select the final element on the page, and you can apply a drop shadow if you want to, like I've done on my test. So there we have it. There's our nice reveal effect for our footer that adds a little bit of interest to your overall design. And the little drop shadow just gives it a bit more three-dimensional effect. So it looks like it sits underneath. As always, the code for all of this will be linked down below so you can grab that, modify it if you need to, or use it exactly as it is by following along with this tutorial. All applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.